Alright, look, we don't gotta sit here and play the slow game, okay? I know y'all love you some Jujutsu Kaisen, alright? The show is goaded, and we're all weebs here. What more do you need to know, okay? But what if? What if I told you, you can play Jujutsu Kaisen characters in Naruto 5e? Let's get into it, shall we? Now, for those of you that have been around the channel a little bit or maybe have watched back, we've done some homebrew content before, and this one really isn't super new. It didn't just get released, but a guy named Old Man Getsu on the Naruto 5e official Discord posted this about a year ago-ish, but I just stumbled across it, so maybe some balancing whack things because, you know, the game's been updated and such, so if that's a thing, it is what it is. But link will be in the description if y'all want to check it out yourselves, and let's dig right in. So with your basic stuff here off rip, it's pretty much all the same. Proficiency bonus is the same. Jutsu is the same. Curse energy and techniques are part of the class that we'll talk about later. Uh, your features, equipment, and all that are pretty much the same. Your Jutsu casting saves, all that stuff the same. But where it gets real fun is the actual class stuff. Now with the fun stuff that you actually get, starting at first level here, you're going to get your cursed energy it's really just another kind of currency you have access to, right? So kind of like if you get a curse mark in Naruto 5e, you have your curse chakra you can use. It's very similar to that. You have your curse energy, which can be used specifically for different curse techniques, which we'll talk about a little more in depth later. Curse technique, this just talks about, hey, this is how many curse techniques you get. Again, we'll go into depth on that here in a little bit. Now, the interesting thing here, which I really enjoy personally, is binding vows. And basically, these are things that will give you really, really good bonuses with pretty rough drawbacks. I always love that in abilities. I love making an ability really hyper strong, but if you take this really hyper strong thing, you gotta bring your character down a couple notches as well. So that's basically what these guys are. Again, we'll go through the list here in a little bit once we get through the main features of the class. Now, once you hit level two with this class, you actually unlock two other unique features. One is gonna be your Jujutsu stance, which is basically just a fighting stance that you get to use that is you know exclusive to this class. Some of them are pretty unique because you can actually use them in conjunction with other ones. For example, Arrogance is Bliss. You can actually use it with things like Gentle Fist, Iron Fist, stuff of that nature. Other ones such as Boogie Woogie, you have to use individually because it's a little stronger and does a little bit more than Arrogance is Bliss. So, you know, kind of helps lean your fighting style one way or the other. The next thing you unlock is Exorcism of the Wicked at level two. This guy basically... As a Jujutsu Sorcerer, obviously your goal is to, you know, rid the world of demons, monstrosities, things of that nature. So this just specifies that anytime you're fighting something like that or anything that has the cursed condition, you actually get bonus damage and some bonus things you can do involving those creatures. Now for levels 3, 4, and 5 here, obviously level 3, just like pretty much every other class, you start to lean into your subclass, which heavily decides how you're going to be fighting, how you're going to be playing, all that good stuff. We'll list those out here in a little bit. Fourth level, ability score improvement, your usual stuff, gain a feat, gain ability score, all that. And they have an extra attack at fifth level, just like some other classes do. So, you know, always helpful, always nice. Now, the last kind of bonus things we get here at level six, nine, and 14, starting at six, ever vigilant, you basically just get a bonus feature that you get to pick. And then later on in the class levels, you get to pick one of the other two that you did not choose. Cursed physique. Basically, long story short, you get two saving throws that you then get to add half your proficiency bonus if you are not already proficient in them. So, you know, it makes it a little tougher, can handle a little more of a beating. And lastly, pseudo skilled at 14th level, you can just hit skill checks that you shouldn't usually hit, which is honestly a pretty unique and cool ability. How it works once you miss and or fail a skill check, you can then use your cursed energy to bump that roll up to whatever the succeeding DC is. So pretty unique, pretty cool stuff. Let's go ahead and hop into the subclasses. So getting into our subclasses here, our first one's going to be Ratio Technique. For those of you that have seen the show, you can look at the picture here and have a good idea of how it works because you'll probably know the character. But for those of you that don't know, the way this guy works is he basically attacks at a certain point on a creature. And whenever he hits that exact spot where that 3-7 ratio hits, he does crit damage, quote unquote. Basically, he just hits really, really freaking hard whenever he hits that certain spot. And that's kind of the idea that this subclass gets to follow really big about hitting crits really big about hitting in you know certain spots doing extra damage in certain scenarios so if you like the idea of like popping off on a huge hit hitting it absolutely to perfection you know things like hitting crits this is going to be a really good subclass for you next up is the one that i'm sure a lot of you are interested in and that's going to be limitless which is you know gojo's technique basically and for those of you that don't know 
he's a goddamn unit. Okay, if you haven't watched the show, he's an absolute machine, can't be touched, all the good stuff. And hey, wouldn't you know it? That's the general idea here. Now, this class does not make you completely invincible, let's be clear, uh, but it does give you some really unique abilities, such as infinite space, uh, being able to do different things of just dealing damage of people within certain ranges of you with, you know, unique abilities, things like that. So if you like the idea of just being an absolute unit and just being cool, hey, Limitless is pretty solid. So coming into our next one here, it's going to be Heavenly Restriction. And this one's kind of Maki based. And for those of you that don't know the show, she's fairly unique in the sense that she doesn't actually have cursed energy of her own. And to be clear, the subclass does not remove or restrict you from using that cursed energy, but it does restrict how much you have and kind of, you know, the, the overall usage of it. But in turn, it gives you a lot of pretty cool abilities, such as gaining certain uh, features that typically would lower your ability scores in exchange for bonuses, and you actually remove the negative aspect. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you gain things that just make your body stronger, make you deal more damage, a little more tanky. So if you like the idea of taking this subclass, but being a bit more of a brute with it and kind of being able to alleviate and get rid of some of that additional power for some other ones instead, hey, you know, that's a good one for you. Now coming to our next one, we got Cursed Speech. And honestly, the easiest way to think about this one is it's like a verbal genjutsu or in this case, an auditory genjutsu, I suppose, because people are listening to you. And this is using... I believe his name is Toge or Toge. It's T-O-G-E. I don't exactly remember how to pronounce it, but basically he gets to use his voice and can control people to do things by just saying words. And hey, that's the power you get. So if you like the idea of having a character where you can just use your voice to control things and use your voice to, you know, be a majority of your power, hey, this is a really solid pick. And here we have the shadow summoning technique. And this one, again, if you know the show, I believe it's Megumi, something like that, bro. Basically, you get to use different hand signs and you summon creatures from the shadows inherently. He makes like shadow puppets with his hands, basically, of these creatures, and that is what summons them up. Whenever they do summon, they will fight with you, help you out, uh, you know, assist you in battle, all that kind of good stuff. So if you like the idea of a summoner, but kind of a unique take on one, well, then shadow summoning is right up your alley. Now coming up here, we have the curse techniques, which these are kind of the unique abilities and typically the main way you're gonna be spending a lot of your curse chakra. And I'm not gonna read through them all. You know, you can pause, read through if you would like, but basically they're, they're little abilities and, and kind of like pseudo jutsus that you get to use with that cursed energy, specifically doing different things like just dealing additional damage, uh, sometimes helping saving throws, reducing damage, things of that nature. So yeah, read through them, enjoy. Now, the last thing about the class here, and honestly, one of my personal favorite things about the class is the binding vows. These are the things we talked about earlier where you basically take them and you gain some really cool thing while giving up some really cool thing. So, you know, to use this first one as a very easy example, you gain 450 feet of blind sight, but you also permanently gain the blinded condition. So a little bit of a trade off there, right? Uh, but nonetheless, uh, as you can see, you can sit here and read through these. A lot of these are going to be gain this bonus, lose this bonus, right? Things of that nature, which again, I really love characters that are like up here in one aspect, down here in one aspect, because it lets you really shine in those cool moments and then really get punished in those other moments, which, you know, who doesn't like being punished every now and then? Don't read into that too much. Uh, but nonetheless, hey, that is your Jujutsu source for class. And there you have it. That is the Jujutsu kaizen class thing homebrew whatever you want to call it honestly it seems like a whole lot of fun i really hope at some point i can get a campaign going where i can you know hop in with something like that because it seems really unique and like a good time overall but let me know what you think if you like this kind of homebrew stuff there's other things i can dig into so let me know down in the comments if you like it and don't forget to hit that sub button right okay we are we are going crazy brazy right now and we are so close to a thousand i just I cannot believe it. You guys have been awesome. But anyway, I hope you all enjoyed and I'm going to see you all in the next one. Peace out.